Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today is um, an interesting lecture. I call uh, I called it "Not So Easy Problems About Cylinders." Well, it's a part of the uh, advanced course of mathematics for high school presented on Unizor.com, and I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because there is a very detailed. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are detailed notes about uh, everything, whatever the lecture is, notes basically are like your textbook. So, um, right now uh, we have covered theoretical portion of many different uh, solid objects in geometry, and one of them is obviously cylinders. Um, I would like to present a problem which might actually seem a little difficult from the very beginning. However, what I would like to say about this problem is number one, it's not a tricky problem. I mean, it's relatively straightforward, which involves some calculations, but no more than Pythagorean theorem as far as, uh, as, far as your theoretical background requirements are. So, um, what also is interesting is this problem um, you might not actually know how to approach it without really thinking about the way, the steps. And um, I actually was thinking about this problem myself in certain order, um, analyzing how I can approach this. And um, I have structured this lecture in exactly the same fashion. I will analyze the problem first. How can it be solved? Or, or calculated or whatever. And then, um, after this plan is already uh, in my mind, um, I was able to, to do it just step by step, and every step wasn't really very difficult at all. What was more, most important in this particular problem was to create this set of steps, more or less easier steps, which combined together constitute a complete solution to the problem. And that's how probably you know every um, uh, relatively complex problem should be solved. First, you have to plan, you have to analyze it, what can be the way to solve this problem, and then implement step by step. Okay, back to business. Um, here is the problem. You have a cube. Uh, I tried to present this picture to the best of my drawing abilities, which are not really very high anyway. But anyway, try to imagine, bear with me. So there is a cube. Now, A, B, C, D is bottom, and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is the top face of this cube. Main diagonal is from this corner on the bottom, A, to opposite corner on the top, C prime. This is the main diagonal of the cube, the longest possible segment among two different vertices um, in the cube. Okay, so this is the main diagonal. Now we have a cylinder which has the main axis, the center line between two bases of this cylinder, coinciding with this um, main diagonal of the cube. Now, obviously, um, it's supposed to hit the three faces of the cube on that side and three faces of the cube on this side, wherever two edges of the main diagonal are. So they are basically like, like inscribed. If you wish, this base, this circle, is inscribed into a trihedral angle and that's, and that's uh, uh, around this particular uh, vertex. And on this, the base of the cylinder, this, uh, this circle is inscribed into trihedral angle formed by these three faces, which, has, which have the common uh, vertex A. Now, what else is known about this particular cylinder is that its diameter is equal to its height. Well, you obviously understand that if you will take a fatter cylinder, which has a greater 
um, diameter of the base it will not go as far into the corner uh, as if the base is a small circle right so as you are increasing the the circle the base um, the height should actually decrease of the cylinder right the height is decreasing and the base is increasing uh, if we want it to be inscribed into this particular cube in this particular way right so bases are tangential to tri to, to trihedral angles all right so there is one particular dimension of this cylinder when the diameter of the base is equal to the height so it's not as I have um, uh, drawn it in, in this particular case it should be fatter and shorter so the diameter would be greater and the height would be smaller and then when it will be equal to each other so we are considering the case when they are equal now in this particular case and that's the problem right now you have to determine the ratio between the volume of the cylinder to the volume of the cube so there are no dimensions given at all but we do have to determine the ratio between the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cube using whatever this information I have just provided about how this particular cylinder is inscribed into into a cube now first of all does it make sense if we don't um, give any dimensions but we still require some um, quantitative characteristic well actually let's think about this way all the cubes are similar to each other with a special with some kind of a scaling right now if you have a cylinder which has a diameter equal to the height all these cylinders also obviously are similar to each other so if you have a one particular cube and the cylinder inscribed into it of that particular type the cylinder with diameter equal to the height and then you will blow it out completely using some kind of scaling well the result will be similar but as you know with any scaling the volume grows as the scaling factor in cube um, which means that both volume of the cylinder and volume of the cube will grow by the same factor so their ratio is constant so that's why the problem makes sense now how to approach it well obviously um, the best way to do is let's just assign some number d to the size of the uh, edge of the cube and then calculate based on this diameter of the cube which is easy it's d to the third degree right d times d times d um, and now using the same d we have to evaluate the volume of the um, cylinder and then we will divide it one by another and hopefully d will be reducible so we will have just the number so that's that's the plan all right plan is great and again the volume of the cube is easy now how can we calculate the volume of the cylinder well as we know volume of the cylinder is the product of the um, area of the base times height so we need the base and we need the height now the only thing which we know about the base and the height is that the diameter of the base is equal to the height and we have to determine these characteristics of the cylinder using only one parameter d so the question is how can we do it here's what I suggest now since the main diagonal of the cube coincides with the center line between the bases of, of the cylinder um, and if you have a cylinder the center line is obviously perpendicular to both bases so I can say that the center line AC or the main diagonal of the cube is AC prime sorry AC prime is supposed to be perpendicular to the plane which contains the base now in this particular case this triangle uh, is um, 
the intersection between this plane, so the plane where the base of the cylinder is, and uh, three faces of the cube. So since this particular circle is inscribed into this trihedral um, uh, angle, so if you will cut the plane where this particular base is, 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 is located, so the plane also will, will cut, um, obviously, these three faces. Now, no, how the plane can, um, can cut these three faces? Well, it will cut <coughs> each edge, a, a prime, a, b, and a, d, at certain points, p, q, and r. Now, from the considerations of symmetry, you should feel that if you have a cube and you have a plane perpendicular to the main diagonal of the cube, it should cut equal, um, uh, equal segments uh, around this particular uh, vertex from which the diagonal is originated. Now, why is it uh, so? Well, consider it this way. So the plane is, up, is perpendicular to the main diagonal, right? So what happens if I will turn the whole picture around this main diagonal. Now, if you have a, a line and you have a plane which is perpendicular to this line and you turn the whole picture around this line, the plane turns into itself, right? So, if you will turn this particular cube around the main diagonal, then this plane which intersects these three um, edges which uh, are emitted from the vertex A will actually turn into itself. It will not. It will be the same plane. The image after the transformation of the rotation of the plane will be the same. Now point D will turn into A prime, A prime into B, and B will be turned into D. Right? If I will turn it this way, the whole cube. So that's why this point of intersection should be transformed into this point of intersection. So that's why, since, since the plane remains the same, the, the, the diagonal, the, the axis of rotation remains the same, and this point becomes this point, so this should become this. So it feels like it should be the same distance, primarily from these considerations of symmetry. <coughs> okay, we have to prove it. And I think this should be our first step. So if I will have a plane which cuts um, our cube um, and the plane is the plane where the base of the cylinder is located, then it's perpendicular to the axis, obviously, because the base is perpendicular to the axis, and that's why it should actually cut equal sides. Now, if I have proven that, and I will, it will be, it will be our first step. What does it buy us? It buys us the following. If you consider this triangle PQR, which consists, which has vertices of intersection of this plane where the base of the cylinder is located and three edges of the cube, then the base as, as a circle, what, what I'm just stating right now, and it should be relatively obvious, this base, which is a circle, within the plane because the plane PQR is this in the same plane as, as the circle, right? Because it's uh, the intersection of the plane where the base is located with these edges of the cube. So the PQR triangle and this particular circle, they are very much related, related to each other. Triangle and the circle are in the same plane, right? So we are talking about the same plane. And what I'm stating right now is that the circle is supposed to be inscribed into this triangle. Now, why is that? Well, let's just think about it. I mean, this is the line where our base plane intersects with this particular face. Now, if my circle is touching the face, which means there is only one common point, and the uh, intersection between the plane of the base and the face is PQ, then PQ should be actually intersecting the circle in one point, and one point between circle and 
and in the in the segment is actually uh, only when the cir circle is tangential to to a segment. So it feels like it should be inscribed circle. So that would be my second step. So after I have proven that these three segments are equal, I can probably calculate the radius of the inscribed circle, and that would give me the radius of the uh, of a base. Now, I know radius of the base. Now, how can I get the height? To equate, to get some kind of equation or whatever. Well, let's just think about it. How can I get the height of the cylinder? Height of the cylinder is equal to the height, uh, to the length of this main diagonal, minus heights of two pyramids, where A is a vertex, and PQR is a base of the pyramid. So turn it this way. And from that side, C prime is the ba is, is the apex, and P prime, Q prime, R prime uh, is the base. So this pyramid must be the same as this one. That's also something which should be very briefly discussed. It's obvious. Um, and then, knowing uh, the height of the pyramid, I can subtract two heights of the pyramids from the diagonal, and that would be my height of the cylinder. Well, knowing the height of the cylinder and knowing the radius of the inscribed circle, I can equate them into each other, and that's how I will find my dimensions of the cylinder based on, uh, based on one parameter, d, which is the h of the cube. So that's the plan. All right, let's try to implement it. Okay, so the problem number one is I would like to prove that these three uh, segments, AP and AQ and AR, are equal to each other if PQR is um, a triangle which is formed by intersection of the plane perpendicular to the main diagonal. Okay, how can I prove that? Uh, <coughs> well, I'll do it the following way. If I will prove that PQ is parallel to the diagonal BD, PQ is parallel to the diagonal BD. What happens? Now, this is a square, right? ABCD is a square. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So if my PQ is parallel to BD, obviously since these are equal to each other, triangles are similar, since this is a parallel, right? So all angles are the same. From equality of these two follows equality of these two. So that would be easy. All right, so how can I prove that PQ is parallel to BD, or, which is the same, B, instead of parallel to BD, I can prove that it's perpendicular to AC, right? Perpendicular to AC, because it's a square, right? All right, so let's just think about it. <coughs> Consider triangle ACC prime. A, C, C prime. It's basically a vertical uh, uh, plane cutting through our uh, cube. Now, what do we know about this? Uh, We know two things. Number one, CC prime is perpendicular to this triangle ACC prime, right? Therefore, no, not sorry, not this one. CC prime is perpendicular to the base, to the ABCD. 
CC prime is perpendicular to the base, right? Right. This is the cube, so the edges are side edges perpendicular to the base. Now, what follows from this is that CC prime should be perpendicular to any plane, uh, any line on this plane, right? So if the plane is ABCD and CC prime is perpendicular to the whole plane then CC prime is perpendicular to any line on this plane, right? To this, to this, it's all perpendicular and even outside, right? Because you can always draw a parallel line, it will be perpendicular therefore these are perpendicular, that's the definition of the perpendicularity between uh, skewed lines all right, so, therefore, CC prime is perpendicular to PQ, right? Since CC prime is perpendicular to entire plane, it's perpendicular to any line on the plane, including PQ. All right, fine. What's next? We also know that AC prime, AC prime is perpendicular to the plane which cuts our cube, which is triangle PQR, because that's how we actually um, draw the plane. It's perpendicular to uh, to the main diagonal. The plane is the plane where the base of the cylinder is, and we have stated that the uh, axis of cylinder, the center line of a cylinder, coincides with the diagonal, right? And uh, obviously, the center line of the cylinder is perpendicular to its base. So, PQ, PQR, as uh, the triangle within the base, within the plane which contains the uh, circle base, is supposed to be perpendicular to AC prime and therefore again AC prime is perpendicular to any line on this plane PQR on the triangle PQR including the line PQ so again if the line is perpendicular to a plane it's perpendicular to any line on that plane so line PQ actually has two properties it belongs to two planes, ABCD and PQR. It's an intersection between these two planes. So, as part of the ABCD is perpendicular to CC prime. As part of the PQR, it's perpendicular to AC prime. So, it looks like PQ is perpendicular to AC and is perpendicular to AC prime, which means <coughs> which means what follows is that PQ is perpendicular to triangle ACC prime ACC prime again since PQ is perpendicular to CC prime because it's part of this plane and PQ is perpendicular to AC prime because it's part of the PQR therefore it's perpendicular to entire triangle ACC prime and therefore it's perpendicular to any uh, line on this triangle on this plane which uh, encompasses this triangle including line AC so PQ is perpendicular to AC PQ is perpendicular to AC and again within the square ABCD if PQ is perpendicular to AC it's parallel to BD so these triangles are uh, similar now these are equal which means these are equal as well so AP is equal to AQ AP is equal AQ 
AP is equal AQ. So we have two of these three uh, segments equal to each other. Now you obviously understand that I can do exactly the same logic with another plane and I will have, because it's all symmetrical, right? So if I found how AP and AQ are equal to each other using different, instead of um, AC prime C I can use something like BD prime D that, that particular plane and I will see that another pair of uh, lines, uh, pair of segments would be equal to each other. So all these P, uh, Q and R are equidistant from A along the edges of the cube. So that's my first theorem. Now what follows from it is let's um, introduce another variable call it X that's the that's x and this is x they're all x's right so um using this x i will express the triangle dimensions of the triangle p q and r then i will use it to calculate the radius of the inscribed circle then i will try to use it to calculate the height of the pyramid with apex uh, a and base p q r this from the A to the center of this uh, circle. And that would give me another one, and then I will have an equation. If I will equate the diameter to the height, I will find an equation where I will get the x from, all in terms of d. All right? Next. <coughs> so, I have proven that AP is equal to AQ equal to AR is equal to X. Now, let's consider triangle PQR. Now, what is PQ, for instance? Well, this is X, and this is X, and this is X, and obviously APQ is the right triangle. Two catchy are equal to X and X, so hypotenuse, which is PQ, is equal to x square root of 2. Same thing with PR, x square root of 2, and uh, QR. So it's equilateral triangle with a side equal to x square root of 2. Now it's a very simple thing to calculate what's the radius of the inscribed circle. This is the base of our cylinder, in terms of x, obviously. So, what is this? Well, uh, you know that in the equilateral triangle, center of uh, medians, uh, uh, altitudes, and angle bisectors, they're all intersecting in this center, right? Now, since this is x square root of 2, uh, this is half of it, so entire height is equal to x square root of 2 square minus x square root of 2, 2 square, square. This is entire altitude. Now the radius is, you remember the all medians are always intersecting in the ratio of 1 to 2. So it's one third of the median. So I have to divide it by 3 and this is my radius of the inscribed circle. Okay, let's simplify it. One third square root of 2x square minus uh, x square 2 right? 2, 4, yes. So this is 3 over 2. 3 seconds, right? So it's 1 third square root of 3 seconds 
and x goes outside. <coughs> well, let's not have uh, radicals in the uh, denominator. I'll multiply it by square root of 2. I will have x square root of 3 square root of 2 divided by 6. So this is my r. Let's write it down. Radius of inscribed circle is equal to x square root of 3 times 2 divided by 6. OK. Now, so I know the radius of the circle. That's a lot, but we now have to determine the height. And the height I will determine from the fact that the height is equal to uh, the diameter of the circle. Uh, on, one on, on one hand. On the other hand, uh, the height of the cylinder is the diagonal length minus two heights of the pyramids which I have on both, angle, on, on both opposite vertices, right? So let's draw this pyramid slightly differently. So I have A on the top and then I have something like this. P, Q, R. So, P, Q, R is equilateral triangle and A is projecting to its center because everything is equal, right? A, P is equal to A, R, equal A, Q, so all of them are equal to X. And this is X square root of 2. This is X. So the question is, what's the A, P? Well, uh, so what is uh, the height? Let's call this point, let's say, M. Now, um, obviously I can use again the theorem of Pythagorean theorem. All you need is this. From uh, the vertex of the triangle to the center of triangle. Now, back to equilateral triangle. If this is the center, then this is the segment which I need. And it happened to be twice as big as this one, which is the radius of the inscribed circle, which we have already determined, right? So this is the radius actually of circumscribed circle. Radius of circumscribed circle, cir circle uh, around equilateral triangle is twice as big as uh, inscribed circle, because this is one third, and this is two thirds of the median. So I can determine immediately the, the radius of the uh, circumscribed circle, this Rm in this uh, drawing, is twice as big, divided by 3. And now I can determine the altitude Am of the pyramid. It's a Pythagorean theorem, again, h is equal to uh, hypotenuse is x squared and the catechus is square of this which is x squared times 6 divided by 9 square root well instead of 6 9 I can put 2 thirds right so I will have 1 third so I will have what x divided by square root of 3. Is that right? Right. x square root of 3 divided by 3. So that's my pyramid height. Now, what's the height of the cylinder? Therefore, h is equal to the, uh, the full diagonal of the uh, cube, which is uh, d square root of 3, right? Well, if this is d, 
this is G, this is G, this is G, AC is equal to uh, G square root of 2, right? G square plus G square and square root of it. So that's G square root of 2. Um, and this is G again. So CC prime is equal to G. So AC prime is equal to square of this, which is G square times 2 plus square of this, which is G square and square root. So it's G square root of 3. So is equal to G uh, square root of 3 minus 2H minus 2h because there is a height of the pyramid here and height of the same pyramid there I didn't spend some time actually proving that the pyramids are exactly the same I think it's just a very trivial consideration if you will just consider a couple of triangles over there so let's not spend time on this so pyramids are the same their heights are the same so I subtract two heights and that's what I have now what should I say that h is equal to 2r. That's my equation, right? From which I can determine x. So let's put it here. h is g square root of 3 minus 2h, which is 2x square root of 3 divided by 3, right? h minus h minus a, a d cube 3 minus 2h which is this that's h right and 2r is x square root of 3 square root of 2 divided by 3 right that's the equation for x okay square root of 3 is happily reduced We multiply by 3, that would be 3D. From which x is equal to 3D divided by 2 plus square root of 2, right? Okay, I don't like radicals in the denominator. I will multiplied by 2 minus square root of 2 and that would be 4 minus 2 which is 2 3g 2 minus square root of 2 that's x okay I have x now let's so all we actually need right now is, if I have the x, I have the r, so I don't need anything more than that. I just need the r. So x is equal to 3d, 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2. So what's my r? It's x, 3d, 2 minus square root of 2 over 2, times square root of 3, square root of 2, and divided by 6. That's our r, right? OK, 6 and 3 can be reduced what else um, I think I will multiply this square root of 2 to here I will have d square root of 3 divided by 4 d square root of 3 divided by 4 and here I will have 2 times square root of 2 minus square root of 2 by square root of 2 which is 2 which is so 2 outside and divided by 4 it would be 2 square root 2 and 2 minus 1 I think that's what it is
Yeah. Okay, I've got R. And if I have R, I have also H, which is equal to 2R, right? So H is equal to D square root of 3 square root of 2 minus 1. Okay, now I can calculate the volume. The volume of the cylinder is equal to the area of the base times height, which is pi square root, which is d square 3 square root of 1 square divided by 4 and times h, which is this, which is another d and square root of 3 and square root of 2 minus 1. So we have determined the volume. Volume is equal to 3d cube square root of 3 and square root of 2 minus 1 to the third degree divided by 4. Now, what's the volume of the cube? That's d cube. So what's V divided by V cube? What's the ratio? It's 3D, sorry, not D. D is, as I promised, reduced. Oh, I forgot pi. I'm sorry, there is a pi here. Uh, pi uh, square root of 2 minus 1 to the third divided by 4. So that's our ratio, and that's the answer to the problem. Now, what I suggest you to do is read very carefully the notes for this lecture. It's very helpful. I was trying to use some kind of a reduced symbolic um, notation for, um, for the proof, whatever I was just proving. And then there are some uh, other formulas. I don't um, present any calculations uh, inside the notes. I just give the uh, result. For instance, result what's R, what's D, etc. So I suggest you to do something yourself. Well, basically that's it for today. I do suggest you to um, use the website unizor.com not only for um, source of the lectures, but also as um, the website which can set the educational process. You can enroll uh, into topics, you can take exams and uh, get, get the marks. Um, and if you have a supervisor which is actually watching over um, your marks, then supervisor can actually mark this particular topic as completed and enroll you to a new topic, etc. So the whole process can be arranged around the website, unizor.com. Thanks very much and good luck.